Hey there, I'm Lance. And I'm Jeremy. And we are Hard to Master, where we take a look at games that are... Hard, hard to, to master, master. Such as... Fractured Sky by Ivy Games, coming to Kickstarter on April 11th, 2023. So in Fractured Sky, this is their new big hit. If you don't know who Ivy Games is, they've been putting out some big bangers, such as... Failed Fate. Uh, Moonrakers, you got Mythic Mischief, and now they have Fractured Sky. This game is an area control bluffing game with some deduction because I don't necessarily know where the star falls, which are the way you win the game, they're essentially points, where these are going to be except for one public objective. That will be out there. The rest is hidden. So I would want to try to figure out where these are going to be so that I can put the majority of power there so that I could win that battle because having the most will get you the starfall. It's okay, you get a consolation if you don't because you're gonna get resources if you battle in that same region. So it is important to try to find out where those are or just try to go based off where other people have given you some information to try to figure out where those might be. So the theme of this game, if you haven't picked up a little bit already, basically you've got these little shards of starfall that have scattered about these floating islands. And you're in your, your uh, ships, your airships, and it's up to you to try and deduce where the starfall is going to be. As Jeremy said, you're going to know where one is just because it's face up each round, but then you're going to be trying to deduce and figure out where the rest of the Starfall is going to show up for that round and battle it out to gain the most, to have the most at the end of five rounds. And so, like Jeremy said, the mechanics of this game are deduction, bluffing, and area control. Those are the main ideas in this game. And uh, let's talk about how a round would work in this game. Uh, you're going to have a number of these blue cards dealt face down uh, for whatever round of the game it's on. So if you're on the first round, you're going to have one card. If you're on round three, you'll have three. If you're on round five, you'll have, all f you'll have five cards down here. And each of these cards are going to match up with one of these floating islands out here. And they all have a name such as Creepy Cove or Torrential Tropics. And whatever card is face down over here, that's where the Starfall is going to show up at the end of the round. You're also going to have one flipped out at the beginning of the round that matches one of these floating islands, and that's the one that you know is there at the beginning of the round. So some people are just going to go straight for that one that's already there. You know it's there. It's a guaranteed deal. If you're the person who has the most strength on this island using your ships, your airships. Now your airships are going to range in value from 0 to 10. And you're going to place three of these ships every round. Only three. Because once you've placed your third airship, you're done for that round. You're not going to take any more actions. Except you will pick your turn order. Yeah. Because I placed that third ship. Now, there are other actions we'll talk about in a second. But I placed that third ship. I must then move my turn order marker to show where I want the turn order. I could go later in the, the next round, taking the coin. Or I could go first. And this is important because this is a tiebreaker. You can only place three ships. And you can place up to a power of 10 between those three ships without being penalized. Yes, I could go over. But if I go up to 12 power total, well, that means every ship is going to be to have two subtracted from its power. And that may or I don't know where that would be best. But I mean, I guess... Uh, from what I've heard, there could be a situation you might want to do that, but usually you want to limit it to 10. So if I place my 10 out there, my 10 and my 1 are different. They will have a white border, and that means that I am giving some information on did I place a 10, did I place a 1. I could verbally or silently bluff with that token, placing it out there. Now, if I play that 10, there's a good chance that my other two tokens are zeros because you do have two zeros. Everything else is only going to be, going to be one of that ship power. Yep. Now, we are using the retail edition, and everything here is prototype. If you follow the campaign or Instagram or YouTube or anything about this game, you know that there's going to be some big, high-quality deluxe yep. uh, miniatures uh, for everything, pretty much. You're going to have... Miniatures for the star falls. You're gonna have little miniatures for the ships and these are going to be magnetically based so that you can Connect by a magnet 
and place it out on the board. You're also going to have a Game Trays Deluxe holder that's going to hide your ship information while also being able to track your coins and your resources and all that in the front of your board. There will also be buildings instead of these little tokens. And I will say, uh, I can't wait to see and play with that version because at times the flat version can be a little tough to tough to differentiate things. So seeing the different building types will be really a nice. much better upgrade. And if you like deluxe games like I do or upgrades, it's definitely going to want to check out the campaign. Yeah. But those are kind of what you're doing. In addition to that, you can scout a card. I could pay two coins to come over here and look at this hidden information card here. And this would tell me where one is, so I could look at this one. And just so you can see, this does have rock and, and a wood. So I could use my token, place it on a rock, gaining myself a rock back. But I'm also giving that information showing that one of the locations that's going to have a star fall is going to be a rock. So it's yeah. not a, a bad idea to take, to take the rock and place it, because if you look... That's already a rock. So you may be telling people because one of these blind ones could be the same as the public objective and get a second yeah, star fall there, for yeah. you. Yeah, so it wouldn't be bad to do that versus giving the information of the log. Now later, people can also go there and check and they could just take the, the rock without placing any more information for people because they would just put it in this area. And then if there was a coin on it, then I could take a coin or I could have chosen the log. In addition to scouting, you can peek at an objective, and I would recommend peeking at a later objective yeah, because so it gives you time to... Let's explain what these are real quick. So there's also these cards up here, and they are going to provide an additional star fall for whoever meets the requirement mm -hmm. the best at the end of that round. So for instance, this first one right here says, have the most airships in combat when it's revealed. That was the last one. Yeah, that was the one that we had in one of our <clears throat> games, yeah. And so if this is the first card, it's going to flip over at the end of the first round once everything is done over here. And then you're going to look and see who fulfills that the best and mm -hmm. reward them a starfall. Mm -hmm. And so when Jeremy's talking about you can peek at one of these, you're going to play, you're going to spend two, any two resources. Any two resources. So I might spend a, a coin and wood here for my action on my turn. And I can peek at the one that's going to happen at the very end of the game. That'd and, be best. And prepare for that. So, for instance, this one says, have the most buildings connected to sinister spires. And so we haven't really covered what uh, some of the other actions are just yet. Because not only are you going to be putting out your airships, battling for these islands to get these starfall, but then you can also build buildings on these little hexes that you see in between the islands. And there's two types of buildings you can build. You can build a fortress or you can build a market. Now, a fortress is going to give you additional strength with an island so long as you have an airship there to be able to battle with. So it's going to bump, beef up the airship that you have there. The market is going to give you an extra resource when there's a battle there at, the, at that island. Because at the end of every round, wherever there are multiple ships of different player colors, there will be a battle. And whoever wins that battle... If there's a starfall, they'll claim the starfall. And then whoever's second, they're going to get both resources for that island. If there's a third place person there, they're going to get one of the two resources. And so if you have a market that's connected to one of those islands, you'll get an additional resource in addition to whatever you won for winning the battle or getting second or getting third. And so... Those are the two buildings that you're going to be building in this game. And this would award for whoever has the most buildings connected to uh, Sinister Spires in this case. So that's how these cards are going to work. And again, you pay two, any two resources to be able to peek at one of these. And you'll put your little token right here to show that you've looked at that one. And you can do that for any of these up here. And so those are the things you're going to be doing on your turn. There's one other thing that you might build, and that is called a, a skimmer. Uh, a skimmer. The, the skimmer ship is a temporary ship that will only be on the board for one round. Now your buildings, they will attach to an island or different islands, depending on how many are attached to it, which would give you benefits off of that. The skimmer ship will just give you power at an island. So you could use those to help spread out, or you could use them where you have a ship to help increase the value. Now we said markets will give you resources. Now you do have to have at least one power spent, and that can be from 
a token like this when we flip this over if you do have at least one power that would increase it or if you had a zero but you have a fortress attached also that would give you yep. the one power you need the one thing is a skimmer ship being that it is temporary will not activate a market for you you must place an a, actual a airship yeah that has power to gain that resource so all in all this game is about trying to deduce where the starfall are going to be mm. in addition to the one you already know is going to be out there and then strategically placing your buildings and your ships to win control of these islands each and every single round to have the most starfall at the end of five rounds so let's talk about real quick what we think about this game uh, for me, the things I like about this, this is an area control game that I actually like, um, which is pretty rare because area control is not my jam. It's not something that I care too much for. I love it. But, but this one, <laughs> I'm here for it. I like this one. It is a lighter game. It isn't going to be super strategic, super thinky. However, there is a good amount, I feel like, tied into the game. And it is all about deduction and bluffing because you're going to be placing these face down and you're going to be making people think, yeah, I know where that starfall is. It's over here when it's really over here. And I may make you think I'm placing my 10 ship over here when really it's my one. And I'm going to be going late on where I really know that the starfall's at. And so it's things like that that you can do mm -hmm. in this game to throw people for a loop. And uh, a lot of information is hidden. Mm -hmm. I will say there's some luck involved, which I know we've talked about. Uh, but that's okay. I'm, I'm all right with that. This is a game that really works and, and it really fits a, uh, a, a hole that is not... Uh, I don't have that this kind of game in my gaming uh, library. And so to mm -hmm. have this kind of game that exists where it's going to be a light, medium weight kind of game that... It's a... It's a... I'd say more lighter than medium. It's yeah. not a super light game, but it's more lighthearted, friendly area control yeah. game. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good way this. of putting it. And, and that doesn't really fit too many game descriptions. So I'm glad this exists, and I, and I want this. I want yeah. this in my library. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this. It's, I'm an area control guy. I like the big, heavy combat area control. And I don't mind where you have a lighthearted 45 yeah uh, to 80 minute uh, air control game this is not super heavy or super long like another game where i feel like there's a lot of luck involved um but it's still a heavy combat type um area control game this isn't it you place three ships you flip over who has the most power so if there's a little luck in this one i don't feel like it's it's taking away because it's not a heavily invested serious area control game this is more of a lighthearted fun game like their other games of like Moonrakers and Veil of Fate and Mythic Mischief where things may happen and, and nothing's too heavy and too serious. Um, but there is a little luck involved with these cards but I feel like when you play throughout the game it almost feels like the luck is evenly distributed yeah. because I may get lucky here, somebody else might get lucky on an objective card that they then look at and then towards the end of the game you have a little bit more of a strategy a strategic buffer to that luck yeah. in the beginning i feel like it is a little bit more lucky but as you get more information on the objective cards you can definitely and you kind of build up that yeah. that ramp of your resources then it becomes maybe less lucky because you can actually go into deuce you can actually build the buildings and stuff so i really like what's going on here i can't wait for the yeah. uh, deluxe version sure. where i can actually see on the board better um things like that but again it, it's a more of a light-hearted area control game that's just fun to play mm -hmm. you, you don't have to sit there and lie to people when you're bluffing i can put the chip down and my silent bluff is enough mm -hmm. it's going to be enough i can put this skimmer ship down to really throw people off these yep. these are a good way to bluff by putting it over here you know i said rock and i know because i have this uh, we didn't even talk about it, but if you're the first person to place at a region, you actually get to draw one of the leftover cards. And this is a place yeah. where the, where you know where it's, it's not. not. So if I had this one that was rock and log, and I know it's not peaceful plains, I'm going to put it on the log. And then people think, well, maybe, maybe it's it is peaceful, peaceful plains. plains. Yeah. So I can bluff with these cards. And then maybe I spend two resources to put a skimmer ship out. Yeah. Because I have, you know... 
I want the resources, and so I do want someone to battle there, but I know the Starfall is not there, so I'm throwing them off their track. So a lot of cool things with the bluffing and kind of hidden information that you're trying to deduce from people and find out where's the best place to put your ships. And I can't wait to play the Deluxe in the, in the future once everything is uh, fully produced. So I would definitely recommend checking out that Kickstarter campaign on April 11th and follow along on instagram with iv games i mean they're putting out some i guess said bangers yeah so you know they're probably already working on the next game <laughs> and uh that no one even knows about except for them and put thing something even different because it's not like they make the same game they they like take a game and they go okay we're gonna do something totally different so yeah. let's do that. Yeah, all their games make are it, extremely let's, different. Let's make the art look great. Let's make the components look amazing. And let's give give the people what they want. Uh, leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about Fractured Sky, what you think about IV Game Studio. And uh, again, check out that Kickstarter campaign down below in the link in the description of this video. If you like this video, please, please, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. That means a lot to us. These videos take a lot of time and effort, and it makes our day to know that somebody out there enjoyed our video and uh, wanted to subscribe to the channel. I'm Lance. And I'm Jeremy. And we are Hard to Master, where we take a look at games that are hard, hard to, to master. master. We'll catch you next time. See ya.